burn my chicken scratch. Um, so what's your model? Your model is where your data sits. Uh, view is what the user is looking at. And your controller is the one that
if you can read that, then uh, you have 20. It's just showing the mapping between the model, the view, and the, and, and the controller. So the model is in Angular, just plain old JavaScript objects. Uh, the view is the DOM, and the controller is represented as JavaScript classes. Um, speaking of the JavaScript objects, if, if anybody has experience with, um, I'll talk about Knockout because uh, I know that, you know, okay, and that comes with Visual Studio. Um, I believe maybe um, Backbone is the same. Many of these frameworks require you, and I don't have an illustration, many of the frameworks require you to derive all your model objects, like you know, an employee record. They require you to derive that from uh, a class that is defined in that framework. I don't know what it's called in, in Knockout. And, and then one of the common problems there is you can't just say, you know, user dot salary equals whatever. You have to say user dot set salary parentheses da, 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 da. and that always killed me. You know, the, the, it, it, because there's nothing to guard you. There's nothing to guard against trying to set the properties directly. So that's part of the cumbersomeness of those other frameworks that Angular gets around um, through its sort of black magic. Um, and you were talking about that a bit, how it, 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 it's smart enough about updating just the parts of the view that need to be updated. Um, I won't get into that too much, but um, if you can read this. <laughs> Please read it up to me. If, can, anybody, can everybody see this? I'm, ha I'm actually having trouble seeing this slide, to be honest with you. Um, this is just uh, uh, illustrating the, uh, you know, just the, um, let me back up a bit. Um, I was just speaking about the model in, in Angular. And there's this concept, boy, if you have a slide on here. Um, the every every controller in Angular has something called a scope. Um, we should uh, just show rather than, than tell because this I I yeah, I don't think you've seen enough to for this to uh, be real clear. I don't think so. And we appreciate your patience. Is scope like a binding then? It's if you bind the body and you pass that to the controller? Or? The, uh, I should flip back to my slide that's actually readable. Um, okay, back to this. Uh, the, the, this user.name, you know, you, you might ask, what is the scope of this? And by scope, I just mean it, the plain English word. What is the scope? Well, Angular has an object that they call dollar sign scope. They, they formalize this, and um, I'll show you some code in a little bit, where when, when, you, when you do write JavaScript code in Angular, um, you will have this object called dollar sign scope. And so if I were manipulating this, um, I can just use my finger. If I were manipulating user.name in JavaScript, I would say dollar sign scope dot user dot name. Because that is literally the scope that this object lives in. And so the code in your controller that manipulates your model, you know, everything is preceded by dollar sign dot scope. Uh, and, and you know, we'll see an example in a few minutes here. So, but, um, and I'm not going to get real involved in it, but or in depth into it. But scopes can be nested, uh, uh, you know, which makes sense because a lot of the, the models are themselves sort of hierarchical. Or you know, you have an object graph, you have a you know an invoice, an invoice detail, that kind of thing. Yes. So just one one observation. I'm not sure that I'm right because I don't know very much about Angular. But when this page loads. 
it loads that Angular JS file, and then what that Angular JS file is doing is it's, it crawls the DOM, right? I mean, this is all running in the browser. Yeah, it it's for these special tags, and then for each one of those tags, it sort of says, okay, I'm going to run something. I see this special ng model, so I'm going to run something. And then the context of that thing that runs, that's the scope. That's so the, correct. Here, the scope is implicit. You can it, implicit to, I believe, body. Maybe HTML, but anyway, um, you can actually explicitly define the scope. If you have a big page, you want to tell Angular, uh, only worry about this section of the page. Yeah. And um, I'm glad you asked that question because uh, there's a door prize and you can. No, um, part of the black magic or whatever of Angular is that when you load it in and um, I don't, I think it just hooks into like, you know, DOM loaded or something, maybe one of the browser events. It actually does, it will parse the DOM to see uh, are there any Angular directives. And a directive briefly is, you know, anything that, that has an ng uh, hyphen. I mean, it's a little more complicated than that. And it, they actually talk about they compile the page and they generate JavaScript code and, and, it, and that's why it's so fast. They actually, they only search the DOM once, you know, when they compile it and they, you know, it, it's, it's very sophisticated, it's pretty amazing. Um, right, and, and so when you get into advanced Java or Angular, and I don't want to dwell on that, you'll actually be cognizant of this, uh, this like compiled phase. But yeah, it's pretty amazing. It actually reads this in and it sort of you know takes control, possesses the DOM in, in your browser page. That's why and I don't have one here, but um, you know, it, that's why you can have a tag that, that is not HTML. You because um, like a, a real common example is like a you know tabs container. If you have a tabs container, you'll just say tab you know, title equals, you know, bracket, uh, tab, you know, blah, 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 blah. That's not HTML. But Angular has sort of taken over your page initially, and it's, it, you know, it's controlling what happens when it, when it, um, when you inject that tab. I, actually, I think I have a slide here at the very end. Yeah, here you go. Yeah. Um, And this is actually one of the selling points of Angular um, that that I'm not sure that how many people here have heard of uh, something called a web component. Um, well, uh, W3C is uh, working on something. I mean, it's still like a pre alpha or whatever, and it's in the stuff works right now. That it will be a way of formally specifying uh, in packaging a web component. For example, a tabs container, um, or any of those really cool jQuery UI things. So you'll just plunk them on the page. It'll be just like Visual Basic all over, <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> for better or for worse. But but um, my point is that that that's coming. Two or three years from now, you will be using web components in your your application. Your browser, except IE will support <laughs> No, they might. I mean, it's, you know, Microsoft's come a long way. Um, actually, IE 13 or whatever will support it, but the company that you're working for or your clients will not. But, yeah, you joke. Um, but the point is that the, 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 the patterns that, that you learn and develop with Angular uh, you can just go back and forth, or you will go back and forth, you know, between web components that are real and supported by the browser, and that will include like mobile, and, you know, IE, you know, whatever. So, um, there's been a lot of back and forth between the W3C committee and the people working on Angular, uh, which is why they're, I mean, they sort of dovetail. And I was going to show a couple more demos here, just to flush out. Does anybody have uh, any more questions at this point? Or you subtract or 
I think it's, I mean, I like to see code, so let's, let's see more code, so, all right. Um, I'm just curious, um, who here uses Visual Studio? What? Who here uses Visual Studio? Who here does not? So the Visual yeah. Studio. Pardon? Yeah. Um, I mean, I do because I work for Microsoft Shop, but um, I kind of miss. You know. Actually, I own things like. All right, I'm going to go back to the way that worked a minute. This projector is not liking what we were trying to make it do, so yeah. apologize for that. Okay, so I'm back to my. What I'm trying to do is split back and forth between source code and the browser here. And if I had something like, um, what is it, WebStorm, I think, has that sort of live preview. Does anybody use that? Yeah, it's, I mean, you're, you're, you're writing code, you're writing HTML, and you're watching it on the other side of the screen. It's just, it's responding. So, I am going to. Okay. I'm just going to flip back and forth. I'm just going to have to remember. So, okay. So let me. Uh, can everybody read this? Okay. Okay. In fact, I think I might take it down a notch because it's sort of going off the screen a bit. Okay. So you can probably still read that. Okay. So um, what I'm doing is the demo. I'm. I'm doing is I'm just going up, I'm, I'm adding something each time, so I'm going up a couple layers because I've talked about a lot and you really need to see what I'm talking about. So um, in this case, uh, this, this uh, ties into a couple of different questions that, that people had and uh, one of those was, um, you know, where is the scope? And in this case, the scope would correspond to the, this controller here. Here's where I'm explicitly, here's why I'm being explicit about the controller. You know, we, we talked a lot about MVC model view controller, but you know, what, what is a controller in, in Angular? And I'm going to show you. It's actual JavaScript. Um, the app, the Application here, here I'm making it explicit. I'm saying this is the entire HTML document. So I'll show you my controller. And, and like I said, I'm just adding one step at a time to this. I showed you an example a little while ago where all it did is it injected you know, Fred or Larry or something into a page using the, using the, uh, the modeling. So I'm going to flip over to the page, and bam, there it is, okay, big deal. Um, I'm going to show you, or attempt to show you, so, three, okay, 
this one up? Uh, okay, there's that scope I was talking about. So, what's happening here is, uh, you know, loading up my scripts, etc. I'm telling Angular, I have a controller, and, you know, that will control this tag, I need the body. It's called user controller. Um, and, you know, please bind this uh, part of the model, or I'm sorry, well, bind or inject this part of the model here. So, my controller, uh, and all your Angular controllers will look like this. So we haven't seen code yet so far, but the code here is actually, you know, pretty simple. So this is my controller. Um, I won't dwell on this too much, but uh, in Angular, you inject uh, the, what they call services in here. Yeah, so I don't know. Scope is the flaw. I mean, so scope over here is basically your model. Yeah. You're throwing in, you're, you know, you're, you're, you're stating, you're getting the data. Either you're getting the data from the RESTful service and putting it into a scope, or you're basically, you know, just in this case, you're carrying in that scope, that user name is Larry, in this case, and then you send it. <clears throat> and it is bound to the user controller in this case, and that's what you're showing. Yeah. So when this page loads, um, when it initially loads, it will actually say for a few milliseconds, hi, you know, brace, brace, user.name, and, and there's a, and that can be annoying, there's a way to hide that, but here it goes too fast for you to see it. But it's actually loading in the document, Angular's taking over, Angular, based on my HTML, is saying, oh, you want to use this controller. This controller here um, immediately, you know, binds this model to uh, this, this member of the scope called user. And then Angular, um, as soon as it exits out of this JavaScript function here, uh, it digests what you've done and it injects it here. So. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay. The next example I'm going to show you is so that was example number two, I think. No, I'm sorry, that was example number three. So my next example is I'm going to show you an event. Um, Angular does have events. Remember I said they weren't necessary for the very fundamental stuff like just the data binding, but you know they're in there. So. My mouse is kind of flaky, that's why it keeps jumping up. Can people read that? Okay. Oh, that's one of the great things about having a screen in the back of the room is people can read that. Uh, so what I've done here, what's different here is 